Hello and welcome back to a Fox in the City channel. I'm Adam and I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today we're starting a compilation video which are aimed at people working or driving or want something to play while you sleep. We have three stories today. First up, an entitled dad's hurt feelings are more serious than a severed finger. Second up, a story about the warning not to mess with farm boys. And third, a policeman gets a date after getting a face full of mace. Story time. Entitled dad hurts feelings are more important than the son's severed finger. For the cast, we have OP, entitled dad, and an amazing mom and a nurse. The story starts late in 2003. I'm a big stocky guy, but a gentle giant. My amazing mom is a small, adorable woman who everybody loves to bits. My entitled dad, however, is a big stocky guy, but mean as hell and always has to be the smartest person in the room and truly believes that the world revolves around him. One day, me and my amazing mom find out that there's a bloodmobile a short drive from where we live. As me and my amazing mom are very kind and charitable people, we want to go and donate some blood. We cautiously approach my entitled dad and ask nicely if he could give us a ride. Entitled dad, can't you see I'm busy? Why don't you walk? He wasn't busy. He was laying on his bed after eating a large sandwich. Me. We can't walk there and make it in time before it leaves. Can you please give us a lift? Like a bear with a sore head, he reluctantly agrees. He can't donate himself because he is diabetic. We make it to the bloodmobile in time and see that there is a small line of people, maybe three to four people waiting to donate. Of course, to entitled dad, this may well have been a line for a Metallica concert. Entitled dad, oh, for F's sake, I'm going to be here all day. If it takes more than 30 minutes, I'm driving off and you can find your own way home. Awesome, mom. Just calm down, entitled dad. We won't be long. Just take a nap while you wait. Me and Amazing Mom walk over to the Bloodmobile and wait patiently in line until the nurse calls for Amazing Mom. While she's being seen, Amazing Mom tells me to tell Amazing Dad that we won't be long. I lean out the doorway of the bus, Bloodmobile, with my hand on the handrail and shout to Entitled Dad. He doesn't make out what I'm saying and gets out of the car. I lean further out of the bloodmobile to shout louder and miss my footing on the step and start to fall, only being stopped by my pinky ring finger getting caught in the handrail and ripping the skin of my finger nearly to the bone. I scream in pain and start cursing like a lumberjack who had hacked off a limb and tell dad, what's wrong with you? He asked. I just tore my friggin' finger off, you half wit. I said a lot worse than that, but none was directed at him. I was just in pain and blood was pouring out of my finger. Entitled Dad, don't talk to me like that. He then gets in the car and drives, leaving me and Amazing Mom stranded at the bloodmobile. The nurse, seeing what happened, quickly brings me inside and tries to stop the bleeding. Amazing Mom, now finished donating, comes to see what all the yelling was about and is horrified to see her son sitting in front of a nurse with his finger nearly ripped off. She hugs me like a, any loving parent would and then asks the million dollar question, where is entitled dad? I tell her he drove off because I hurt his feelings when I shouted that I tore my finger off. Never in my life have I ever seen Amazing Mom get so angry as she did that day. She asks for my phone and then steps outside. I can't make out what she said on the phone, but less than three minutes after she hung up, Entitled Dad had returned and actually ran to the front of the bloodmobile with a look of terror on his face as he walked up to Amazing Mom. Again, I couldn't hear, but definitely saw her give him an amazing punch across his jaw that made his knees buckle, followed by a shout, you selfish jerk. 
The nurse had just managed to bandage up my hand and sent me on my way. There was an awkward silence on the drive to the hospital entitled Dad never spoke to me for the rest of the day. At the hospital, they had to cut the mangled ring of what was left of my finger and managed to stitch it back together until the day he died. Entitled Dad never apologized for driving away and leaving me, but tried to make me apologize for shouting him. I told him to drop dead. And eventually he did, but that's another story. What do you think? Was Opie the jerk or was his father? Let us know in the comments below. Next up, don't mess with the farm boys. Hello, Redditors. I'm making my first post and I have been a lurker for a long time. I hope this fits the pro revenge stories. We would have commented lots of times, but I'm viewing the videos on my TV with no chance or like subscribe. So the usual stuff. English is my first language. Typing on a PC, I will try and keep the errors to a minimum. Feel free to send me all the comments you like. This is my story, so feel free to post it anywhere and by anyone as you have my permission. This will probably be a long post. Backstory. This happened to me in the middle 70s when I was about 15 and I get a laugh every time I tell it. My family grew up in central Minnesota on a 120 acre farm. We raised milking cows, pigs, chickens, and had a couple of horses. Well, in Minnesota during the winter, the temperature can drop below minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So before the winter and only the thing we could do with the animals manure was to haul it out behind the barn and stack it in very large piles and wait for warmer weather to load it and spread it on the fields before plowing. My dad worked in the metro area to support the farm, so my 14-year-old brother and I would take care of the farm work before and after and on the weekends. We got paid for selling milk when the crops came in, so we liked it. The story. So April rolls around on the farm and it's time for me and my brother to load up and haul away all the pieces of manure from the winter. We have three tractors and two manure spreaders to work with. How it would go is that me and my brother would load up a spreader with a tractor fitted with a loader and then haul butt with a tractor spreader combo down the road to where dad said to spread it. We had several fields nearby that we leased from some of them. Some of them require driving as much as 20 to 30 minutes on the road. Tractors hauling a load with a max speed of about 12 miles per hour. This will become relevant later. The road we had to drive on had been run through some really marshy lowlands and is only about two lanes with little to no shoulder. Had to try and follow the driest places so you end up with a road that curved constantly because of the curves the lanes were separated by a double yellow line which in minnesota means no passing other vehicles as it was not safe the country sheriff patrolled this road regularly and you didn't want to be caught by them breaking passing rules the cast me takes no guff from anyone brother call him sam evil boy let's call him bubba dad great dad that lets me settle it me and sam are loading and hauling manure taking turns so that we stay constantly busy when i notice that sam should have been back half an hour ago i know that something must have happened so i jump up on the old pickup and head down the road to find him i find him down the road with the tractor's front wheels and one of the back wheels off the road and the spreader leaning at a crazy angle about to spill the load. My brother is up in the tractor seat looking like he was pissed off. I pulled up to him and asked him what happened. Sam said, Bubba ran me off the road. He pulled up behind me and started honking his horn and yelling at me to get off the road because he was in a hurry. I wait for him to go around, but he yelled he couldn't because he already got one ticket for lane violations and the second one caused his insurance to go up and he might get his license suspended. He just keeps honking and yelling and then roars alongside me and swerves right into me. 
I had to ditch the tractor or I would have hit him. Let me tell you about Bubba. He lived in the nearby town with his single mom who had won some kind of settlement and she spoiled him rotten. He was just 16 and has gotten his license. His current pride and joy was his brand new Oldsmobile 442. For the not car inclined, this was the biggest and most powerful car on the road at the time, not modified. He loved that car and roared around everywhere with it. He was always in a hurry and sped around like a maniac up and down the country roads. So he could go as fast as he wanted. He had roared up on me several times, but when I saw it was him, he backed down. The reason he backed down was because he was afraid of me and I was on the varsity football and wrestling teams and he knew I took no guff from anyone and could take him apart with one arm behind my back. Well, now I had to go back to the farm with my brother and get the other two tractors and try and pull the stuck tractor out of the ditch. As it turned out, I had to contact a couple of neighbors to bring tractors and help us get our tractor out. This ended up taking four hours in total, but we got the tractor out with no damage, but completely covered with swamp muck. We thanked the neighbors and I headed home and Sam went to spread his load before returning. When I got home, my dad was home from work and he was looking at the piles left behind the barn. Dad, did you get a lot done today? Was there some kind of mechanical problem with the equipment? He asked us because he knew we wouldn't just slack off and do nothing as we liked doing the tractor work. Me. No. Bubba ran Sam off the road in a very swampy section of the road. Dad, was Sam hurt? Did it break any of the equipment? Sam's fine and we just got the tractor out with the help of a couple of neighbors and we went to spread the load before coming home. Dad, so what are we going to do about Bubba? We can't have him thinking that he can do this to anyone around here because the next time someone could get hurt badly. Should I call his mom about this or do you think you can handle this by yourselves? Me, I have a plan that should stop him from doing this again, but if it works, we can tell the neighbors about it and should keep Bubba in line from now on. Dad, fine. Now, as long as you don't break anything or hurt anyone, I'm fine with letting you handle this. Me, okay. Dad, now get ready for dinner and help your mom set the table. Sam got home a few minutes later and was covered from head to toe in the swamp muck that flew off when he was rolling down the road. He had to shower before dinner and afterwards as well because he and I had totally hosed down the tractor and spreader to keep the muck from gumming up all the works when it dried. The next day we started an operation, the revenge. My mom yelled to us as we had a call from the neighbors in the house. This was way before cell phones and in fact, we were on a party line where everyone had a special ring to let them know it was the call for them. I took the call and the neighbors who lived next to the road told me that Bubba was tearing up and down the road like crazy again. He was harassing everyone on a tractor as he went by. They reported that nearly caused several people to run off the road with his antics. I think I thanked them and went outside to tell Sam the plan was going into effect. Now, Sam was about an inch shorter than me and about 30 pounds lighter, but he always wore a hunting orange sweatshirt when he was working in the cool April temps. I, on the other hand, wore a red flannel plaid shirt. Well, I owned an orange sweatshirt too, but this day I was wearing it instead of the flannel t-shirt. I put the hood up and started down the road with my load as I expected Bubba come roaring up to me in his car and started honking his horn and he probably thought it was Sam driving. I waited until he was directly behind me and close as he could be when I slammed on the brakes. Bubba was forced to slam on his brakes and when he came to a stop he was only a foot or two from the back of the spreader. He started yelling cursing at me when I reached up and pulled the hood of my sweatshirt down. Bubba's eyes got so round that they almost bulged out when he saw me, not Sam driving the tractor. I looked down at Bubba and gave him the single finger salute and reached down and pulled the lever. Now for 
you who don't know tractors, almost every tractor comes with a shaft protecting out the back of the wheel housing unit that can be engaged and rotate, provided my power is attached machinery. The lever I pulled engaged that shaft. My spreader was powered by that shaft. Now, this was a very special load that Sam and I loaded just for Bubba. For the city folk out there, different animal manures come in different stages and how gross it smelled. <laughs> and as to how gross and smelly it is, Horses are the least gross. Pigs can be the worst. The load I had was one quarter horse, cow, and chicken manure, and the remaining three quarters was all pig manure. All of a sudden, the crap began to fly. Now, before I had left the load, I had set the controls to the lowest spread and maximum unload speed. What this meant is the manure was being spread only 12 to 15 feet behind the rotating spreader. Wheels and spreader would unload in less than 10 seconds. What this meant was for Bubba was that one second he was looking at the back of the spreader and the next he was in the middle of a flying crab storm. He was so surprised by this that he had no time to take action before his car was completely covered in at least a foot deep of the most stinky, gross smelling manure you could imagine. Once the load was gone and the crap had stopped flying, I disengaged the shaft and hopped down to the road and walked up to Bubba's car. I approached his driver's side window and looked inside. That scene I could see through the crap running down the sides of his car has stayed with me for 40 years and still makes me smile. As a farm kid, I used the manure smell, but Bubba was a town kid. He was sitting in the car gagging and holding his nose and trying not to throw up in his nice new car. He couldn't get out of the car because if he opened the door, some of the crap would get inside. I started yelling at Bubba and here is what I said. Me, Bubba, can you hear me? He nodded. What happened here today is because you were driving recklessly yesterday and ran Sam off the road. You have also been harassing my neighbors on this road as well. I called all my neighbors last night and we decided that you needed to learn a lesson. We don't want you tearing up and down this road anymore. If you do, someone, it may not be me, will do this to you again. Do you understand? He nodded. Now in about half an hour, this stuff will have run down the car to the point that you will be able to use your wipers to clean a space so you can see to drive. I recommend that you drive slowly. On a personal note, yesterday you could have hurt my brother bad. If I ever hear from Sam that you are messing with him again, I will personally break both your arms and legs and throw you into the river to see how well you float. Do you understand? He nodded again. Good. Well, I'm going to have a nice rest of the day. And with that, I turned the tractor around and headed home. When I pulled into the farm driveway, Sam was standing there and laughing so hard he couldn't talk for several minutes. When he could stop laughing, he told me that he had just gotten a call from our neighbors who lived on the road where I dealt with Bubba. The neighbor was able to see everything I told Bubba, and he was on the party line letting everyone know what happened. Sam said that there was a line of cars going back and forth by Bubba, honking and laughing at him because he couldn't go anywhere yet. This got me laughing too, and I couldn't stop for a couple of minutes. When my dad got home, he got a call from one of the neighbors asking if he knew what had happened today, and he replied that he had just gotten home. The neighbor told him everything, and he started laughing so hard that he had to sit down to catch his breath. More of the story. Don't mess with the farm kids. They know how to mess up your day good. Next up, I do work here, lady. <sighs> My most painful time with an I do work here, lady moment. Right. I still feel the sting of this. So if I make any mistakes, please forgive me. Small details, so people don't get confused and angry for wrong reasons. I am a Chinese NARC officer. In a southeast country within South China Sea Route, I have been serving for five plus years now. 
Too long, didn't read at the bottom. Players on the story. OP, me, and L, lady. On our story, this happened last night. I was walking to a 7-Eleven type store in normal clothing with a bright neon green vest with some blue lining. So people will know that I'm a cop. Just looking at my vest. After buying some chips and a soda for another officer, I was walking to my car when I noticed a lady in front of me and it looked like she was heading to the club. Clubs are not allowed to open in my country, but it's not my department's problem. I noticed her purse accidentally dropped to the floor and went to pick it up and was catching up to her. I yelled, hey, lady. Now she's picking up the pace and speed walking away. I continued calling after her as I chased after her. I caught up to her and tapped her on the shoulder, calling to her. She whips around and sprays me in the eye with homemade maize and me screaming from the pain and her yelling for help as well as yelling rape some people gathered around and managed to calm her down as well as calling me an animal then a dude with a brain yells out he's a cop <laughs> me still in pain reaching out my hand with her purse barely squeaking out you dropped your purse the dude quickly brought a bottle of water and washed my eyes out. The lady, now humiliated and realizing she just assaulted a cop, she, she apologized profusely as I was still washing out the pepper spray from my eyes. I asked her to come into the station this morning to explain her side of the story to another officer so she doesn't panic and change the story. Once her report was done and walked out of the office, she came to me again and apologized. Though still in some pain, I told her to calm down as I don't blame her. Here's where it gets interesting. She then asked for my number and asked when my next day off was. She was asking me for a date with her. I'm going to meet her in a restaurant next week. Too long, didn't read. Lady thinks she was going to get raped, so she pepper sprayed a cop. After everything settled, she decided to date the cop instead. Seagull321 adds, I hear milk works best for easing the effects of pepper spray. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. And remember to like the story, comment below, and share it with all your friends. We'll see you back here on the next one. Have an awesome day. Bye.